Hi everyone and welcome to our talk on Zone Builders which is basically a project for creating cross-platform and language agnostic tools for generating zoning systems for urban analysis and modelling. My name's Robin Lovelace and I'm going to be presenting the tool on behalf of the team and I've got the list of other authors there. So before I talk about the uh, tool itself I just wanted to say a little bit about uh, the community and um, why I'm presenting here. So I'm an enthusiast for Phosphor-G, as I imagine most people are. Free and open source software for geospatial has huge potential to solve a lot of the world's biggest problems, I think, and it's also a really great community. So great that I bought the t-shirt, as you can see here. And um, for me, yeah, it's been a long journey. Um, I first encountered the amazing diversity of the Phosphor-G community back in 2013 when I attended the uh, Phosphor-G uh, conference in Nottingham um, and I had a great time and basically became a convert um, to the cause and you can see I've got the t-shirt there. So uh, this t-shirt is quite worn so it's one of my favourite t-shirts and I wear it all the time so I couldn't resist getting uh, a new t-shirt for this uh, conference and to me that says something about the um, the, the conference um, that it's more than just about the technology it's about the people involved and there are great people working in open source software in general and in open source software for geospatial in particular so it's a pity I can't be there in uh, Buenos Aires but it's absolutely fantastic that the organisers are making it accessible to people who can't travel for whatever reasons. It's quite expensive to uh, take an international flight. It creates a lot of emissions. So let's communicate in the best way that we have possible, which is in this case via uh, video link and pre-record. So I hope the technology is working okay and um, let's get on with the talk. By the way, in terms of my location, I'm just uh, in Leeds, uh, a, a city towards the north of England, and it's raining heavily outside, so I really wish that I could be uh, in a nicer place. But in any case, I'm going to shrink myself, but keep myself there so you can uh, still see me a little bit, and I'm going to go straight on with the uh, presentation. So just going into presenter mode there. So I've got an indication of the timing and yeah, I'm going to be talking for about 15 minutes um, on this zone builder project. So uh, the first thing to say is check out the Phosphor-G website. So uh, I just googled the, um, the project. So if you if you Google something like Phosphor-G um, and Zone Builders, you'll probably find it. And you can see here, there's quite a lot of information about our session on the Phosphor-G website. So um, yeah, this talk isn't aiming to repeat the information here. Um, so please do take a read and that includes links to uh, the source code and also um, some more information about ourselves. Um, another thing that I wanted to say is that I've been delaying doing this talk. I don't know about other people, but I find it quite hard to get the motivation to do a, a talk just to a video camera, even though I know lots of people are gonna be watching um, in the conference. So one of my delaying tactics was actually to create a new map. So, um, and, and it's also an opportunity to uh, talk to people about the language um, that I've used primarily to develop this software. So um, in case you haven't seen it before, this is um, R code. And um, I guess it's quite new to a lot of people in the um, Phosphor-G community because um, it's, quite a niche language that, that has a particular speciality in uh, statistics. So it's a statistical 
programming language, but it's also really good for making maps. So I'm just gonna do a very, very brief demo of uh, what I did to generate the first slide. So basically, uh, with R code, just like Python and other languages, uh, you often start by loading the module. So I'm gonna load the Tmap module, which is for making uh, maps. And that uh, package is actually developed by Martijn Tenekes, one of the authors. Um, you can create objects. So you can see I can print out uh, the people, which is just a vector of characters. You can create year, which is the, the year that we got involved in the Zone Builder project. And um, you can then create a simple features data frame. So this is uh, exactly the kind of thing that um, is typical of um, geospatial project uh, projects. You can save that as an shape file or probably better a geo package or geojson and then just talking a little bit about the r language um you can map over so this is basically like a for loop and generate zones for each of those locations and then you can create an interactive map as so so um, that just shows how r can be used as a way of creating um, content and creating maps. It's basically a command line driven GIS system, very powerful, very flexible. And I think it deserves more attention in the R community. So um, yeah, that's actually the first slide um, other than this opening slide, which you can find online at zonebuilders.github.io. So, um, yeah, that's the, uh, the first thing to say. And I need to up, update this uh, first slide so that it contains um, a bit about the authors. And we are like, it's an international project, as you can see. Um, so just a little bit about us. I'm a researcher at the um, Institute for Transport Studies at, in the University of Leeds. I'm an Associate Professor of Transport Data Science and I'm really interested in how new technologies and data sets can support sustainable transport planning policies. Uh, Martijn um, will be, uh, can introduce himself on the interactive side, but he is a statistician based in uh, Rotterdam and works on big data and is uh, an experienced R programmer. And then finally, we have Dustin on the other side of the USA, who's based in Seattle, and um, he is the, uh, a software engineer and the lead developer of the uh, AB Street um, city simulation software. So um, yeah, why did we all join forces to get into uh, this zone builder project? So the first reason is that uh, it's difficult to compare cities using the default zoning system. So focusing in on Buenos Aires, you can see that uh, you have a zoning system, but if I was to try and compare this area of uh, Buenos Aires, for example, in terms of population density with another city, let's say London, um, I wouldn't be comparing like with like because the zoning systems are actually different. The, the shapes of the zones vary quite a lot. So there's a need for consistency to compare different cities. And um, we have faced this problem in our own research. So we, all of us have needed a general solution. And we just started talking about it, Martijn and myself, and came up with this idea of a um, consistent zoning system for comparing different cities. We also thought this would be a fun programming challenge. So um, it's actually really good opportunity uh, to learn R, for example, because it's quite a simple concept, just building these zones. And for myself, I wanted to explore a different language. So it was an excuse to start playing with some Rust code. So I'll come on to that later. Um, yeah, so these zoning systems can be used in different ways. Um, the first of them, I think, is just as a way to navigate in a city. 
And Martine and I have used this to um, locate each other when we're visiting each other. So I visited him when he was visiting in, in Oxford and he came to, to visit me in Leeds. And basically the zoning system allows you to um, state where you are on the map in quite a broad way. So addresses can be very long and very precise, but if you just wanna know roughly what part of the city, you can say, oh, I'm in the Northwest segment. Um, or with this zoning system, you can use uh, the labels. So the way that the zoning system uh, works or that the default zoning system works is by um, each of these rings is a letter and then each of the segments radially going round is a number from one to 12. So this is the clock board uh, zoning system. And it allows you to say, for example, oh, well, we're gonna go back to my place, which is in C01 of the city. And then later on, we're gonna to go to Bradford, uh, which is in E09 of the Leeds zoning system. So I don't know if this is gonna catch on, but that's um, the first kind of informal possibility of how you could uh, use the zoning system. So uh, that that's just, the first idea, which is more kind of prosaic um, everyday life. But more seriously, and thinking about urban analytics and uh, research, you can use the zoning system to uh, communicate. And I think this diagram really shows the value of having a consistent geographical grid. So you've got four maps of London, it's all exactly the same data, and it um, firstly highlights the importance of thinking about your level of geographic aggregation and the modifiable area unit problem. And in A, that's kind of the raw data where you've got, um, I think they're one kilometer uh, grid cells and you can see that those are um, very um, dotted. So you, you get a lot of value, but there's so much data there that it's kind of hard to work out the general pattern in fact, I think that that is higher than um, one kilometer, that, that may actually be 100 meter grid cells. But in any case, um, that's one way of uh, presenting the data. The default in London and many cities is to aggregate to the most commonly used uh, system, in this case, which is the borough level. And uh, that results in B, but there's a problem there, which is the uh, shapes are not consistent so that means you can't compare London with other cities but it also distorts the map so C is um, basically a consistent zoning system and it shows this really clear pattern so the data actually looks different and you can understand it differently and then finally D is the outline from B plus um, the zoning system in C and I think that shows the value. I think D is a great way of communicating that information. You can see this very clear pattern of reduced uh, levels of air pollution as you get further away from the centre which is slightly harder to see in the other data sets. So um, that's exploring data within a single city um, but I think the most powerful use of the, this kind of zone builder approach, which is having consistent zones, is um, comparing between different cities. And um, yeah, the, I think the best example here is just comparing London and Paris. So if you look up the population of London and Paris, you might think that London is a much bigger city, but that this uh, when you put it in a consistent grid, that shows you that um, in fact, that may just be because Paris has a different definition of the city centre, which is much smaller. And in terms of population density, they're actually quite similar in extent. So, um, yeah, that um, really illustrates how this can be used to compare different uh, places. So this is um, comparing um, populations. Um, and then in terms of uh, data analysis, this is a comparison between UK cities in terms of <clears throat> how many people, how, how safe is it to cycle 
in different cities. And if we were to use just the um, administrative boundaries, you wouldn't be able to get a direct comparison. Whereas here you can see that the general pattern is that um, you have blocks of high risk areas away from the city centre. It's rarely the city centre which is the most dangerous place. Um, and this is in units of how many people are killed and seriously injured per billion kilometres cycled. And it also, also very quickly flags up the kind of danger hotspots. Um, so po policy makers could use this to identify where do you need to invest in safe uh, cycling infrastructure. So there's some of the reasons and I wanted to start off with the motivation before going into the technology. But now we're, I'm going to talk a bit about the technology and um, yeah, so primarily in the first instance, um, the software was implemented in the R programming language as I just demonstrated and you can use this very um, easily. You need to install the zone builder package. Um, and then you can create your zones with this function called ZB zone. And the first argument that it takes is a place. So that could be a geographic object or it could be the name of a city and it will automatically look up where that city is. Um, and then you can define how many circles you want. So the default zoning system is this clockboard uh, system that I've described. And then you can do stuff with that zone. So you can save it or you can um, visualize it, for example, in this interactive map. So this shows what the zone builder system looks like um, for Buenos Aires. And interestingly, it seems to match fairly well some of the features. So you've got these ring roads and um, in fact, yeah, the, the zone builder system matches quite well uh, with other um, existing city layouts. Okay, so yeah, this is uh, what you need to do to install the zone builder package. If you're new to R, first you need to install R, which you can look up online. I recommend using the R Studio um, interactive development environment, which uh, can run in browser, um, as I'm demonstrating there. But in terms of um, using the package, yeah, you need to install it and then load it, and then you can uh, test it out with uh, some of the functions there and just start generating uh, some maps, okay? Um, so yeah, you can just create zones in one, uh, one command. It just uh, produces these um, zoning systems and uh, there's only two main arguments that it takes, which is the center point of the zone and then how many circles um, does it have? And by default, uh, we can see there, um, just another uh, quick example. Um, if you look for the help for on the zone builder package with this question mark uh, symbol, um, I can just look at the help for ZB zone and you can see that uh, by default, the number of circles is five unless you specify differently. So, um, yeah, that's, um, that's how, how it works and that's how you can uh, plot it. Um, another argument that it takes is the area. So if you already have a city boundary, uh, you can provide that and it will um, provide as, as many zones as there are um, to, to capture the whole city and then you can plot it. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how it works and you can save the results and use them in other software. So that's if you've got R. If you don't have R, the exciting thing is this is, this is fairly new. We've created a command line tool, uh, which is called the Zone Builder Rust Crate. And uh, that works in exactly the same way. It's more portable than the R package, so you can use it without needing to uh, install R and um, yeah, you can um, generate zones from the system command line. Um, and I can just uh, show you that very quickly. I'll make the uh, terminal a bit bigger, but um, 
let's try this. So zone builder. So I can type that in and by default, it generates uh, some GeoJSON output. Uh, I can go zone builder help and it gives me the help. That's probably too big really. So I'm just gonna make that a bit smaller. And um, just the example that I've got there is, uh, let's try and get this to work. So um, yeah, here's, here's an example of actually creating some zones. So I'm going to save the output into a zones.geojson format. So that has outputted, that's created a file called zones.geojson and I can look at that uh, for example, with less zones.geojson, and there it is. Um, if you want to install the Rust crate, you can just go cargo install um, zone builder, and that will go away to crates.io and um, install it. So this is um, a really reliable and reproducible way of getting zones. So yeah, that's um, been a, a great experience. I think we can go beyond this and I think FOS4G is about making um, technology and tools as accessible as possible. So I've actually opened an issue on the Zone Builder website on creating um, a Python package. So if anyone listening is into Python, uh, please get in touch and we can try and uh, make this uh, Zone Builder idea available in another and very popular great language. So um, yeah, that's uh, just an idea and you can see the issue there, that's issue 44 in the Zone Builder repo. So that's, that's impressive, I think technologically that you can run it in R and Rust. The Rust crate needs a little bit of work, so I plan, uh, we plan to work on that over the next few months, but it's definitely minimum viable product ready. To me, the most amazing technologically uh, thing technologically about our project is you can actually run the Zone Builder software in your web browser. So that's at a web page at zonebuilders.github.io forward slash Zone Builder Rust. And I'm just going to open that. And you can create zone, zoning systems anywhere. So let's go to Houston, Texas. And you can see I can just locate that. And this is good because um, city definitions that the definition of a city center is kind of subjective and it may depend on your use case but let's say uh, central Houston is there and then Houston's quite a big city look at this outer ring road so we want to capture that so we can increase the number of circles there so that we're capturing the wider Houston area so um, I can then download that and use that in the uh, web browser. So that's really cool. And uh, then you can read that in, in, in another software. So uh, yeah, we've actually written a paper um, on one specific implementation of the Zone Builder. Uh, using the Zone Builder software, we've come up with this clockboard zoning system, which is the one that I've presented uh, so far, which has 12 uh, radial ring, uh, 12 radial um, segments and then it has a number of rings so that's a, a zoning system for urban analysis and then finally in terms of next steps um, we would like to take this further so can it catch on do we need to modify it um, and in terms of technology we want to fix any outstanding issues in the R and Rust implementation so if you find any of those let us know we'd like to add new features we, but I think most importantly, we'd like to uh, create zone builder implementations in other languages, primarily Python. But um, we have, um, there's many great open source languages. And I think it would be really fantastic to see these added to um, the zone builder uh, GitHub. So you can see here, we've got um, a GitHub organization and uh, yeah, it would be great to add more implementations. So final thing to say is thanks to everyone. So thanks to people from the GeoRust uh, community, particularly Stefan for helping me out with the, the Rust implementation. Um, and then thanks to the R Spatial community for getting me into programming. 
And then finally to the OSGO community for making such great uh, foundation on which we can build. So this wouldn't have been possible without OSGO. And I've got loads of links at the end uh, for you to check out and use the Zone Builder system from the safety of your own home. So have a great conference, everyone. That's it from me. And I look forward to uh, seeing some of you and hearing feedback um, from the conference as it progresses. So that's it from me. Bye for now.